guys, it's your boy, Barca boy, 103. Today we're going to be reacting to the Barcelona news over the past 48 hours where there is a lot to discuss. We have details on Gundogan signing, pivot position being put on hold, other midfielders coming in. We have how Lo Celso and Longlet could be linked their deals, kind of like Carrasco and the Memphis were back in January. I'm about ruled out in for Brozovic and Guler. Update on Neymar possibly coming back. And update on the signing of Victor Roca. Of course, with players coming in, we have to sell. Huge news on the sale of Kamal Longley, which is very advanced. Interest from Titi. Collado said exit as well, advance as well. A lot of interest for Abdi, of course. We have some updates, of course, on where Barcelona will play in the Juan Gam for next season. Deco could be the sporting director of Barcelona very soon. And how players that we've sold in the past could bring in some funds for Barcelona this summer but before we get into it make sure you guys smash that like button down below let's try to get the 200 likes this video be very much appreciated also if you're new make sure you subscribe down below if you haven't already and let's get into it now, before we get into the video, this video is sponsored by Goals TV. Goals TV is a football specific streaming platform that is focused on growing a true culture around the sport in the US and North America. And Goals TV has a variety of content for you to watch as well from match reviews, previews, podcasts, vlogs. It has everything for every single football fan. Now, the best part of Goals TV is that all the content is made by fans. Gives you that authenticity, that connection as well. I've been putting some of my content on there for the past few months. It just brings a sense of community all in one place. So make sure you check out the link in the description down below and sign up for Goals TV for free today. Very simple sign up process. You just fill out your name, your email, and boom, you're in. They also have an app that they just released recently where you can stream stuff and watch stuff offline as well. Overall, it's a great community that you should join. Let's start off with the transfer news over the past 48 hours. Now, we're first going to be discussing some of the details of our brand new signing, Ilkay Gundogan. If you do not know, yesterday we got the confirmation from every single journalist in the world, including the man himself, Fabrizio Romano and Gerard De Miro. They both gave the confirmation that Gundogan has indeed signed his contract for Barcelona and it should be announced very, very soon. Now, we do have some details from, of course, yesterday where there was an absolute roller coaster. Matteo Edeman flew to Germany. He negotiated with Gundogan in the Munich airport because Gundogan was going to be flying for his holidays. He met him in the airport, negotiated the deal, signed the contracts, and then left straight away. Now, Roger Sador from Mundo Portivo has come out saying that Matteo Edeman and Jordi Cruyff held up to five meetings with Ilkay Gundogan's uncle and agent, who is also the agent of Andreas Christensen. Since the beginning of the year in the last two months Chavi spoke to the player several times and convinced him and despite the fact that in recent weeks Ilkay Gundogan has been under great pressure from his other interested club who offered at least double his salary of course in Saudi Arabia he remained faithful to Barcelona and joined the club. Now Gerard De Miro has come out saying that Ilkay Gundogan will not officially be announced as a Barcelona player until he says goodbye to Manchester City. We have more confirmation about that later on as well. Javi Miguel from AES came out saying that Ilkay Gundogan is expected to join Barcelona squad on July 17th two days before a preseason tour to the U.S. So, of course, Gundogan will join the squad on the tour to the USA. He should be joining the training sessions a few days prior. Of course, he went all the way. He won the Champions League. He went on international break as well. So, he does get that extended holiday. Now, Juan Martí has come out saying that by contract, Barcelona have until the first league game August the 12th to officially register Ilkay Gundogan. Otherwise, he would be eligible to leave on a free deal. Now, of course, this was the same. That was, that was the same thing that last summer with uh, Andreas Christensen and Franck Kessier. If they weren't registered by August the 12th as being free agents, they are allowed to leave for free as they wish. But of course, Barcelona will get that done no problem. Juan Martí also came out saying that the third year of Ilkay Gundogan, of course, two plus one contract, that plus one will be activated if he participates in at least 60 percent of the Barcelona matches in the second season that will automatically renew his contract for three years. Now, Alberto Roque from Gigantes came out saying the official announcement of Ilkay Gundogan signing by Barcelona will point to some time in the weekend. Before that, though, Gundogan will say goodbye to Manchester City. And finally, Helena Kodes from Kobe confirms as well saying that Gundogan has asked to be the one who announces departure out of respect 
for Manchester City. So what is going to one announces his departure from Man City, probably a video, a tweet, Instagram post, whatever the case may be. That's when Barcelona will then probably an hour or two, maybe even immediately afterwards, will officially announce the signing of Ilkay Gundogan. Now, following his signing, of course, Mateo Eleman and Juan Laporta were both out and about yesterday, and they were stopped a lot. I think Mateo Eleman was stopped at the airport on his way back from Munich, and he was saying this is just the beginning. And also, Juan Laporta came out saying the transfer market is going well so far. The best players in the world prioritize playing for Barcelona. So hopefully this can be the case for the rest of the summer transfer window. Again, we're doing very well. We've signed Inigo Martinez, who we wanted. Ilkay Gunwan, who we wanted. Deep negotiations for Victor Roca, who we want. So Barcelona are progressing very well. We're not even hit July 1st yet. If we can get two more signings before the American Tour, we are well on track to meet the objectives of both the club and also the coaching staff. Now, we all knew from the beginning the number one priority for Barcelona this summer, alongside the signing of Leo Messi, we won't talk about that, is to sign a pivot. As we all know, in the past weeks, no real concrete reports or links with Barcelona signing a pivot. Now, Juan Martí has come out saying that today the club cannot afford a high-cost transfer and focuses on sealing and confirming El Caigo in the one's transfer and exit the market is being tracked right now for low cost options perhaps in a form of a loan but we will have to wait several weeks not one or two to find out so the club right now after signing il kaigunuan their priority is now exits ex of course you know victor roca get that sealed and then exits 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 having been from as came out saying that chavi's decision regarding the pivot remains the same he wants a top player in that position Xavi is willing to wait until the last day of the Mercado to get that. Amrabat was in a hurry to close his future, and Zuba Mendy still remains the number one target on the list. Now, Jordan Mero did come out yesterday saying that with Mateo and Iman being in Germany, he might negotiate for Joshua Kimmich. As we all know, that's very unlikely because Mateo and Iman didn't even leave the Munich airport, so that's, you know, very unlikely. Now... I think it's a big risk for Barcelona to go very deep into the transfer window without signing a pivot or at least having a concrete solution because we cannot start the season with our new pivot either not being signed or being only like one or two weeks in training. We need to have a pivot. I can see either Gundogan or Frankie de Jong playing there for now, maybe the first few match, match days of La Liga, but we have got to sign a pivot. Again, the signs for both Kimmich and Zubamendi aren't that great. I think uh, Sorloth, the striker of... Uh, Real associates that came out on Norwegian duty, I believe, or I think he's Norwegian. I think Norwegian or Denmark, somewhere with the green, uh, not green, a uh, red and white cross flag. Anyways, he came out saying that it's going to be very difficult to negotiate, to you know, convince Zumendi to leave. Which, if his teammates are saying that, that's very evident. And again, Chavi still wants him, but convincing him to leave Real Sociedad when they're in the Champions League is going to be the big problem. So. We have some, you know, reports of us being linked with pivots. We'll talk about that in a few seconds, the possible low-cost ones. But again, the Chavi still wants a top-priority one. The club right now can't really afford that. They want to prioritize on exits right now for the next few, uh, several weeks. And they want to maybe get a pivot deep into the Mercado. And for now, they are keeping their close eyes on the low-cost options. Now, with the top targets in the pivot position being complicated, Barcelona have been linked with a few other alternative options. But one alternative option that we have been talking about for a very long time that is no longer an alternative option, he's not even an option anymore for the club, it is Sofian Amrabat. Gerard de Miro came out saying that Sofian Amrabat is out. Barcelona have dropped out of the race for him and are no longer interested in his services. Big, big news. This is, of course, we've been tracking Amrabat since middle of the January transfer window. He waited for Barcelona, and now he does not look set to join Atletico Madrid, but Atletico Madrid are now the favorites for his signing. We'll wait and see how that develops. Again, I think this is a very disappointing. I think Amrabat is a fantastic player, not as a pivot, but I think in that interior role or maybe in a, th a three midfield, four midfield in those advanced positions, I think Amrabat could be a great signing. But as a pivot, I understand it, but it is Barcelona are missing out on a very quality player. Now that the emergence of Guido Rodriguez is coming, Juan Martí has come out saying that at least until yesterday, neither Real Betis nor the Guido environment received news of Barcelona's interest. So again, not really concrete there. And Juan Martí also confirms that Amrabat is no longer an option for Barcelona. So Guido Rodriguez, of course, has been talked about for quite a few weeks now. Jordi Miro wrote his big pivot list when I was in Barcelona. He said that Guido Rodriguez is, you know, 
top four, top three alternative options. I think, again, he's more of an Amrabat profile, like, like, same thing. I think he's a double pivot, a box to box. We're not be apart from Kimmich and Zubamendi, when Kimmich, you know, I think is a bit borderline as well, but I think he's a pivot. We're being linked with a lot of box to box midfielders to fill that pivot role, whether it's Amrabat, whether it's Rodriguez, um, you know, N'Golo Kante, who else? Ruben Neves. So it's a bit weird, in my opinion. But nonetheless, Guido Rodriguez, he's still on the radar, but no contact with Betis or even Guido's environment. And the next option is Marcelo Brozovic. And for the price, I think he is my favorite. Now, the Marcio's come out saying that El Nasser have offered 18 million euros to Inter Milan for Marcelo Brozovic. Barcelona would be ready to, with a fee as they are interested and they can offer a three-year contract with a salary of 7 million euros per year, which is around about 140, 150,000 euros per week. Everything will depend on the player. So Barcelona's interest in Brozovic is concrete. 18 million euros, honestly, low cost, come in for two or three years to do a job. I'm not mad at it. I think over 20, you're pushing it, but it depends on what Inter Milan will accept. Apparently, Inter Milan want around 30. I think they have rejected this El Nasser bid, but if Brozovic pushes for the move for Barcelona's, you know, offer of 18 plus a few million in variables, you know, Champions League winners and all this stuff, I would be all over this. I think what's available on the market, what you can get for the price, I do think that Brozovic is one of the best options out there. The club talk about a low a low cost option, low fee, or maybe a loan. I think Brozovic checks all those boxes off, so wait and see on that one. But again, DeMarcio, probably the best source you could say in Italy, alongside for Mr. Mano. He's come out saying that Barcelona are very interested in Brozovic. And the final pivot that we have been linked with is a name that has re-emerged, and that is Dani Parejo. Of course, Radomiro back in January dropped that bombshell that Parejo could be an option if Busquets does end up leaving. He has left, of course. Esport 3 came out saying that Villarreal's Dani Parejo is an option to replace Sergio Busquets. He's not a priority, but on the list of acceptable targets, and he has a contract until 2024. Now, of course, if you don't remember, Barcelona were very in for Parejo on, in 2017-2018 when he was at Valencia, if I'm not mistaken. And Esther Valverde was a big fan of him. We didn't end up getting him. As this could be, you know, Inigo Martinez, Parejo reunion. We we're supposed to get them back in 2017-18. Now we're getting them in 2023. I'd rather Brozovic, but I think Parejo isn't a bad option either. Just for a year to, you know, do a job. I could understand why the club would go for him. And I wouldn't be too upset depending on the cost. I would not pay that much for him. And again, Villarreal probably don't want to get rid of him, and to be fair, we have been linked with a lot of Villarreal players, you know, Alex Benia, Los Elso, who we'll talk about later on, or just in a few minutes, and then now Denny Parejo as well, so we'll wait and see what the club decide to get in this pivot position, it's going to be very, very interesting, and also will be a very crucial decision as well, for me personally, I think, you know, the top two, Zumendi, Kimmich, I'll be happy with either of them, but if we're looking at those other alternatives, low-cost option, for me, I think Brozovic would be top, and I would, be, I would look at Parejo as well, I'd rather have Parejo Think with Rodriguez, I'd rather have Parejo than for the pivot, Sofian Amrabat, and I'd rather have Danny Parejo than Oriel Romeo, who we have been lightly linked with. I'd rather have Danny Parejo than Sergi Dard there every single day of the week. So, wait we'll and see what the club decide this position, but it will be a very peculiar decision, and the club have to wait a little bit. They probably will, I think, around beginning mid July to decide on a pivot, but of course, it's one of the top priorities for Barcelona this summer. Now, despite the fact that Barcelona have sealed the signing of Ilkay Gundogan, we have been heavily linked with some of his alternative options as the club still want to strengthen in the interior positions of the midfield. One of the main names has been Giovanni Lo Celso. Now, Juan Martins came out saying that Lo Celso was not in Barcelona's initial plan. It is more of an opportunity to try to secure the exit of Clement Longley. In principle, it is not a firm option, but it does depend on how the negotiations will go with Spurs. Now, we do have a big update on Longlet sale, which I will talk about later on in the sales departure section. Now, Fernando Polo and Fernand Martinez from Deportivo have come out saying that Giovanni Lo Celso is not only liked by Xavi, but by many in Barcelona's sports sector. There is general consensus at the club on the player. Barcelona believe that some kind of agreement can be reached with Tottenham, as until now, they have shown little interest in in the return of Lo Celso, the cost is not expected to be very high either. Spurs are also important in Clement Longley as well. Another favorable option for Barcelona would be a loan deal. I'm going to give you guys a little teaser with Longlet right now that, to talk about Lo Celso. We are very close to selling Longlet. I'll talk about the fee and the uh, operation later on. 
But the fee isn't that great. And if the fee isn't that great, I do have suspicions that Barcelona might be trying to do a Yannick Carrasco 2.0, where they sell Longlet to Tottenham for very cheap in exchange for a favorable buy option on La Celso. They might say, okay, here's Longlet for 1 million. We want a 20 million euro buy option at any point for La Celso this summer. And if the club, you know, makes some moves, we sell for on Kessier. Then they want to activate it or have some extra cash. And they want to need another interior. They want to activate it by all means. So that could be an option in my opinion. But it does depend on Xavi very insisting on an interior. Because keep in mind, you have De Jong now. You have Gundogan. You have Pedri. You have Gavi. You have four already. You only need, you have two starting, two on the bench. So you're pretty set for interiors. Unless one of those interiors will drop in the pivot to provide backup and competition. Whether it's Gundogan, De Jong who play there regularly. Or if Chavi's really handing home on that four midfield, he might want to bring in an extra pair of hands. Again, Chavi was very interested in that Bernardo Silva type player role who can play on the wings and in midfield. And La Celso has done that in the past. He's played on the wings for Betis. He's played on the wings for PSG as well. So we'll wait and see. Not going to boil this up and, you know, get hyped about it too much. But the interest for Barcelona, for La Celso, is very concrete. Now, another interior who Barcelona could end up signing is the young Turkish midfielder Arda Guder. Now, Juan Martin has come out saying that I think there was interest in Arda Guder, but now it's kind of cooled off. There are other priorities, but we will see what happens. Now, Lekib have come out saying that Barcelona and AC Milan are the clubs which are most interested, but Milan are leading the race. English clubs are also there as well. Milan see him as a Brahim Diaz replacement, and the player is also attracted as he get regular game time honestly an AC Milan move for Arda Guler is pretty decent I must say but if the club are very serious on him I think we should go get him I've seen some of his highlights and my god what a player he is at his age at the price 17 million euro release clause if you can get you know Lo Celso for that price I understand why you pick Lo Celso but Lo Celso is like 30 million 40 you cannot pass on a kid like this who's half the price and his quality is just already there at his age. And he could, of course, rise above the talents and above the potential and above the prime of La Celso. So, we'll wait and see. Again, the Barcelona fan base as well is very, very big on Arda Guder. Imagine a midfield, you know, with him and Pedri or him and Gavi. It's nuts. It's nuts. So, we'll wait and see. I think it is an option. I do think the club prefer La Celso at the moment. And also, when you bring a player this young, he needs development. You know, Pablo Torre, he's come in for about the same price. You know, hasn't shown, you know, potential p problems off the field. Ricky Push, same thing. So, you don't want that 2.0. I think a move to Milan for him would be fantastic. If he's not, you know, a diehard Barcelona fan like I am, which, I, of course, I'd go to Barcelona in an instance, I think AC Milan would be a great move for him. Get in there, you have regular game time, shine in City A, uh, then you can get that big move later on. But, of course, with Barcelona, you want to get him now at the right price. So, we'll wait and see with other Guller. He is on the radar of Barcelona, but not a priority at the moment. Now, a reinforcement for Barcelona this summer that isn't a priority at the moment, but it could be later on in the window, is to reinforce the right-back position, which, in my opinion, should be second after a pivot. Now, for Germano has been linking us to Juan Cancelo. He's come out saying that Barcelona remain the most interested club in Juan Cancelo, who will 100% leave Manchester City this summer. The situation depends on FFP. If the club can sign Gundogan, Victor Roque... Indigo Martinez, another midfielder, and Juan Cancelo were having a 10 out of 10 summer. Juan Cancelo would level up this team beyond belief. We do not have a right back right now. It's Sergio Roberto and Julian Arujo. Ain't no way we're, you know, quarterfinals of the Champions League with that with that kind of profile at right back. Unless Julian Arujo has a Alejandro Balde 2.0 season, it ain't gonna happen. I think Cancelo on loan would be part of my language, an orgasmic signing. If we can get him on a permanent transfer, it depends on the price for me. If we're paying under 30, sure. If it's over 30, I wouldn't risk it, especially at his age. If he was a bit younger, I'd push for it. Again, we have been linked with Cancelo for a very long time, since back in 2015, 2016, when he was at Valencia. We've been linked with him, and you know what? I think he, right now, revolutionized Barcelona's back line. Not only can he play at right back, but he can provide coverage at left back as well. Let's say, for example, Alejandro Balde gets injured. God forbid that doesn't happen. You can pluck João Cancelo at left back. Then you can put, you know, Kundi at right back or Roberto. Because I'd rather have Roberto at right back or Julian Aroha at right back than Marcos Alonso at left back. And that's a fact. So, we'll wait and see. I'm very, very optimistic about us signing a right back this summer. I pray it happens. I think it would 
make us just a 10 times better team. We just need a natural right back in this squad. And we're competing, no doubt in my mind. If we can get this Cancelo deal off the line, for me, this would be one of the top deals for Barcelona this summer, probably alongside El Kai going to one. So we'll wait and see what happens. Again, not a priority at the moment, but definitely a position that Barcelona will look to reinforce around middle to the end of the transfer window. Now, a player that has been linked with Barcelona, now a player who has been linked with Barcelona every single summer transfer window since he freaking left when he snaked us back in 2017, is Neymar. I said, you know, two years ago when he signed that new deal with PSG, he'll never return to Barcelona again. I'll never talk about him again. We're back again. Now, Ferran Corazza Sport has come out saying that Neymar really wants to return to Barcelona and will give everything to make it happen. He's even willing to lower his salary. Having Miguel from AS came out saying that Neymar Jr. is still not in Xavi's plan. As we all know, Xavi did that big interview with Gerard Romero about two weeks ago or one week and a half ago, if I'm not mistaken. He said in that interview, Neymar and I are friends, but he's not a target, but we're still being linked with him. Juan Martí came out saying that Laporta didn't want Neymar a few weeks ago. I think Neymar's stage at Barcelona is over. Jordi Miro came out saying that some people in the club want to see Neymar's return, while others don't see it happening. The fact that people are considering this in the boardroom is very, very annoying. Unless, look, I get it, we didn't get Messi, so people are saying that, oh, we said that, oh, we'll go for Neymar if we don't get Messi. Unless Neymar comes on a loan for, I'm saying, like, Less than 100,000 euros per week. You're probably saying, but Neymar, he'll sell shirts. He's not worth that. I don't care. What he's put us through the past five, six years, transfers and Siqueda and all this stuff, 100K a week, loan deal, no fee involved. I might consider it. If Xavi wants it, I'll back it. If he's absolutely dirt cheap. If you're paying a fee, I wouldn't pay a penny for Neymar. And that's my opinion. You know, PSG call and say, hey, 10 million, he's yours. I'd hang up the phone. That's just me. If the club do it, I don't blame them. Anyways, we'll wait and see with Neymar, but I highly doubt it. I'm seeing a lot of mock lineups on Instagram with Neymar left wing. I'm like, pfft, Chuck Alonso in there. And Alonso, I believe. So we'll wait and see with Neymar. I doubt anything will happen. But this is probably just his entourage linking him with Barcelona to get him a move to the MLS or maybe even Saudi Arabia. But the Brazilian player who I do want to sign this summer is Victor Roque. And we're on the verge of agreeing for his signing now Joaquin Pereira who of course is the number one source for Brazilian players to Barcelona he has come out with a bombshell he's come out saying that Victor Roca will be a Barcelona player in July here are the details of his transfer the transfer fee will be a fixed 35 million euros with 10 million euros in variables and the variables and the fee will be played over three installments Five-year contract until 2028. He will have the 1 billion euro release clause as well. Total agreement on a salary and 100% adaptable to the new regulations at the club. And Juan Laporta plans to meet with Atletico Pamieres to validate the verbal agreement that was reached with Deco. So apparently Laporta is going to travel, meet with the club, and make sure the agreement is on the right track. And then the signing will be sealed. Last night, I think for his game, yeah, he scored a goal as well. So he's on fire. He's... You know, hopefully not increasing his price, but I think, very optimistically, I think we can get this deal, or let's get a here we go in confirmation by the end of this week, maybe beginning of next week, but this deal is on the verge of completion. Now, Gerard Demiro has come out saying the signing of Victor Roca is not closed yet, it's on the right track, but some people at the club think it's not at an adequate price. So some people on the board think, you know, paying 35 million euros for an 18-year-old Brazilian who hasn't played a single minute in Europe is a risk, and it's a risk. But it's a risk you have to take. Again, you've missed out on all the Brazilian talents. Vinicius, Rodrigo, Endrick. God knows how many other ones you've missed over recent years. You've got to take some risk. And that's why you trust Deco. A player, not a player, a person who is an absolute expert on the Brazilian market. And if he's pushing for the signing of Victor Roca, that means there is something there. So wait and see. With Victor, I think the deal will be done by worst case scenario middle of next week best case scenario by the end of this weekend i think now with barcelona sealing the deal for il kai good one they'll do one final push again we all heard a few days ago that he's gonna play a game on wednesday then thursday friday final negotiations and then boom that signing will be done so hope we will see that very very soon but again victor roca is gonna be the next signing for barcelona the question now is when will it happen 
Now, as we approach the beginning of July, the club now have validated their summer transfer plan with Mundo Portivo coming out saying that right now the priority for Barcelona is a pivot, whether it's Zubemendi, Mendy, Joshua Kimmich, Brozovic, or even Guedo Rodriguez. They also want an interior. El Kai Gunawan is sealed. Maybe another one in Arda Guda or Lo Celso. They want a striker, of course. Victor Roca, that sign is very close. And they also want a right back. That's not a priority at the moment, but an offensive right back like Juan Cancelo, Raccoon came out confirming this, saying that Barcelona is confident of making more additions. Ongoing negotiations right now are for a Victor Roca signing and also maybe a pivot replacement for Busquets. And if there are important departures, like maybe from Kessier, Ansu Fati, Ferran Torres, a right back, and even an offensive player, i.e. Lefwinger, is on the table. I would put the right back signing ahead of a left winger signing, if I'm being completely honest. I think, again, if you sell either Fran or Ansu, you just bring in Abdi and replace him, or you just sell Abdi and you use that money. Imagine you sell Abdi thirty million. There's Cancelo loan right there. That's the dream for me. So we'll wait and see. I think again, strong plan here. This plan will help us compete in Europe next season, and of course push domestically. Because apparently, according to reports, Real Madrid are done with signings this summer. They signed Ferran Garcia, Jude Bellingham, and Jose Lu. I think that's it, if I'm not mistaken. I don't think they signed anyone else. Um, they brought back Brahim Diaz. Um, I think that's it. So, to be honest, that's not really scary. Their front four is only, what, Rodrigo, Vinicius, Jose Lu, and Brahim Diaz. So, not too worried about that. They renewed Tony Cruz and Madrid. So, they'll be probably starting in the midfield ahead of Kamavinga, Chuamene, and Jude Bellingham. Back line is still questionable, especially in the fullback position. But I do believe if Barcelona execute their summer transfer plan, they can compete on all fronts next season. Let's now discuss some players who have been rumored to leave Barcelona over the past 48 hours. Of course, the club needs some sales in the final few days of June. You have about a week left of June and the club needs sales sales. Now, having Miguel from AS came out saying that Xavi intends to talk to the discarded players before July the 10th. Aleman told Xavi that only Kessier has been receptive to an exit while Ansu and Ferran remain inflexible. He also informed that the exits of Umtiti, Langlet, and Collado are well advanced. So Chabi, before July the 10th, will tell the players who he doesn't want to leave. I'm surprised this hasn't happened yet. Of course, last summer he did it very early. This summer a bit late. When Aleman has told players to leave, only Kessier was kind of open to it. He's like, eh, we'll wait and see. Anzu Ferran both said no. And of course, those lone players will be out the door very, very soon. Hopefully. So again, it's gonna be very. I honestly think that Anzu Ferran are both gonna stay. If they, if one of them is sold, I will be shocked. I am being 100% authentic, 100% honest. If one of them is sold, I will be shocked. So we'll wait and see what Chavi decides on who to tell to leave and who not to tell to leave. But again, that is expected very, very soon. While some exits are well advanced. Now, the two main players who Barcelona want to sell before June the 30th are the two French centre-backs, Clément Longley and Samuel Omtiti. Ferran Corras from Sport came out saying that Clément Longley, Samuel Omtiti, and Alex Collado could leave Barcelona before June the 30th. The club's also working on the exits of Sergio Des and Gustavo Maia. And on Omtiti, Olympic Lyonnais and a club from Saudi Arabia are interested in Samuel Omtiti. And Barcelona could negotiate and give him up with a letter of freedom in order to save on his salary. I was really hoping we'd get a fee for La for uh, Omtiti, a couple million. I think with the season that he had with Lecce, I think any team in, you know, City has top eight, top ten would pay a couple million for Omtiti. But if we're really that desperate, which I think what will happen in the end, looks like we're gonna let Omtiti go with the letter of freedom. I think that's probably respect for him as well for taking that salary, not cut, but you know, extend his contract to, you know, spread out his salary. So fair enough to him. But the most advanced exit at the club at the moment is the exit of Clement Longley. Juan Marti came out saying that Longley is the closest one to leaving, but at the moment it is not imminent, but it could be imminent very soon. Ferran Corras and Sport came out saying that Barcelona and Spurs advance Longley's transfer. Spurs would offer five. <laughs> Spurs would only offer 5 million euros and Barcelona would like to close the operation before June the 30th. Progress has been made, but it still takes a few more meetings to reach a final agreement. His departure will save the club 16 million euros next season, lowering the wage bill. Remember when the club has been, you know, leaking the media for the past month. We want 10 to 12 million, 10 to 15. They fucking settled for 5. Now, if we go back to La Celso, this is what I was talking about. You sell Long left for 5 million you get a, you know, favorable buy option for Lo Celso. This is just a Memphis Pie Carrasco 2.0. That's how I see it. 
And for just saying long left for five million, honestly, I tweeted this yesterday. I don't blame them. They want to get rid of his salary. Sixteen. Now, what, the, what the fuck is Bartomeu thinking? Giving him sixteen? I don't know, man. But gotta get rid of him. Completely understand it and. Getting some money out of it is better than nothing. Look at Um Titi. We're letting look at Um Titi. We're letting go for free. You know what I mean? So getting money for Long Let for me is better than nothing. And of course, his exit very much well advanced. And we're kind of you know scamming Tottenham because you know Tottenham don't really want him. They're kind of offering us just something to keep the player who's somewhat decent for them has been decent for us, obviously. So we'll wait and see. Five million is the price right now. Advanced talks for the sale of Long Let as the club will push very hard to get this done before June the thirtieth. Now, players exit that is very much well underway is the exit of Alex Collado. Gabriel Sanz and Deportivo has come out saying that there was a meeting between Barcelona and Collado's agent to assess his situation. Mateo Aleman told the agent that Collado would leave through a transfer or a loan. Collado has offered some clubs like Las Palmas, other teams in La Liga, as well as other proposals from Turkey and Greece. It is needed to be decided if the club will take a percent of future sale or a buyback option into the deal so again the club still skeptical on how to sell uh collado it could be a loan transfer or let him go for free with a buyback or a future sell on clause option there sport also came out saying that there was a meeting with barcelona's point section management and collado a few days ago to assess the situation among several proposals the player also likes las palmas and Ronaldo the most future sell on clause could also be included of course las palmas you know see pimienta Granada, where he was two years ago, if I'm not mistaken. So, we're going to see with Collado. Again, his exit, very important. He's on 4.5 million euros as a salary, which you've got to get rid of how he's on that money is beyond me. So, again, Collado's exit. Discussions are there, well on track, and I think this will be done before the end of this month. Now, another way in which Barcelona can earn some money this summer is through players' future sell-on clauses sales of course we just talked about collado how we could include a future selling clause in this contract there are five other players who the club did include their option to get a percentage of a future sale who could be sold this summer mundo portivo came out saying that players at barcelona kept a future percent selling clause with whom the club hopes to cash in on this summer are jean claire Tudibo, who the club have 20 percent of their future sale philippe coutinho who the club have 50 percent of their future sale malcolm who the club have 7.5 percent of their sale Ferran jukla who the club have 10 percent and of course, Ilach Mariba, who the club have 10% as well. Now, if you think about this, I think the current board sold all these players but Malcolm, which is a bit mad. So the club think that these five players will be sold at some in some way, shape, or form this summer. I think Todiba will be. I've heard some rumors about Malcolm. I've heard nothing about Jugla. I've heard some things about Mariba. And Coutinho, I think he might go back to Brazil. Something like that. But again, if Coutinho sold for 10 million we get 5. If he sold for 5, we get 2.5. Again, Toribo is set to go for around 40, so we do get, I believe, like 5 million of that, if I'm not mistaken. So this is money coming in, you know, we'll absolutely take it, and I think, you know what, let's hope these players go for big fees, that way we can get more monies from those operations. But again, keep your eyes on these players being sold this summer, because if they do, the club get a percent of that transfer. Now, a player's future at the moment that is very much in doubt, but he has the option of both staying or leaving the club this summer at his own will is Eric Garcia. Now, Juan Martins has come out saying that Eric Garcia is willing to continue at Barcelona despite being told that he will not get a lot of playing time. And if the player will ask to leave, the door will be open for that. Now, the RDA and RS have come out saying that FC Barcelona have put Eric Garcia on the market and the club wants around 10 million euros for him. But then Marca came out saying that Eric Garcia wants to stay and fight for his place. So, what's pretty evident right now for Eric Garcia is that it's up to him. If he wants to leave, the club will sell him. If he wants to stay, the club will keep him. As we all know, Chavi likes the player, whether it's for squad rotation, uh, maybe in training, he likes him because he's very versatile. He plays a right back, center back, and pivot. Maybe for the season, we have some injuries. He'll be great off the bench in some matches. So, Chavi's happy with him. I think the player is content with staying as well. But I think if he does go this season without playing too much, he may push for a transfer next summer. But again, he's been out of the Spain squad recently. De La Fuente has not picked him. Of course, he was big. Uh, Luis Enrique was a big admirer of him. That's why he always picked him, kind of like Harry Maguire in Southgate. But Eric Garcia, of course, is way better than Harry Maguire. But nonetheless, what is with Eric Garcia? Again, his future's in his hands. If he wants to, uh, if he wants to leave. He'll leave, but if he wants to stay, he will end up staying. Now, a player at Barcelona who has been approached to lead the club, but will very much unlikely do so, is the first team captain, not officially, but the first team captain of the club, Sergi Roberto. Juan Martins came out saying that there was an inquiry on Sergi Roberto from Saudi Arabia, but his agents didn't receive 
anything formal. Now, I think the news broke from Imkum Karnur from, uh, I think he has a Twitter account, he's a journalist who writes for nobody. He came out saying that Saudi Arabia is in for Sergio Roberto. Then Gerardo Miro came out denying that, saying that Saudi Arabia are not in for Sergio Roberto, he's going to stay. But then Juan Marti came out with this, saying that Saudi Arabia did contact Roberto through intermediates, but nothing, you know, official or formal to his agent. Again, Gerardo Miro has come out saying that Sergio Roberto will continue at Barcelona next season. Now, I wouldn't let Roberto go for free because what's the point in that? He's our captain, you know, veteran. He needs someone like him there. I wouldn't let him go for free. But if they offer, you know, five, ten million, adios, amigo. Gracias for the remontada. Out you go. And the Messi last second goal in 2017. Apart from that, I can't really think of any much else he did. But money, we'll take it. I don't think that's going to happen, though. So, wait and see with Roberto. I doubt he'll leave. He's about to be the captain of his dream boyhood club. Maybe next summer he'll leave where his contract will end, but I don't see this happening this summer. But we can dream. We can dream. Let's now discuss some of the news starting Barcelona over the past 48 hours. First up is that Pablo Gave has been officially registered with the first team. If you go on the La Liga and Barcelona website, he is there officially registered with the number six. This is about the 10th time we've done it, but hopefully this time... It will be the last. Mundo Portivo came out saying that Gavi's registration as a first team player is definitive. Even if the court cancels the registration, Barcelona have enough salary margin to register him as well as Ronald Araujo. So Araujo and Gavi's new contracts have been officially registered. Again, we're still waiting for the renewals of Alejandro Balde, Lamen Yamal, Sergio Roberto, and Marcus Alonso for their official registration. But that shouldn't be an issue, of course. It was mainly with Gavi because, of course, it went to court and all this stuff. But... He's officially registered again. We'll wait and see if La Liga take it down and put him back to number 30. Who knows, but officially for now, again, he's registered. Hopefully see it that way. Now, the first match where we will see Gavi wearing the new number 6 shirt on a permanent basis, hopefully, will be in the Juan Gamper at the Montjuic Stadium. Raccoon have come out saying that Barcelona will be able to play the Juan Gamper Trophy on August the 8th and the second match of La Liga season on August 19th the 20th. At the Montjuic Stadium, the works at the stadium are progressing faster than expected. As we all know, the club did officially ask La Liga a few months ago to play the first, I think, three or five matches of the season away from home. Of course, they granted that wish to Real Madrid for like two or three seasons a few years ago. So I think that wasn't going to be a problem. But now the stadium improvements to bring it up to speed have been going faster than expected. I think they'll probably test it out again the Juan Gamper, see how that goes. Everything goes well. They'll probably progress to La Liga. But 100%, it's basically going to be confirmed now. The club will play the Juan Gamper match at the Montjuic Stadium. The opponent, yet to be confirmed, but most likely will be an Italian club. Now, the final topic that I want to discuss before I end off this video is the news about the new sporting director of Barcelona in Deco. As we all know, he's basically the sporting director. It's not official quite yet, but what is official is that Deco has announced the closure of his D20 agency after eight years of working so his agency is now shut down it is no longer in existence he has left it Rafinha by the way left him a huge message on Instagram thanking him for everything as well which means of course he is set to be the new sporting director of Barcelona an official announcement is going to be coming in we believe in the new month of July Ben Aid also came out saying that Laporta will give Deco a lot of power during the summer transfer window again that is the case he will work alongside Matteo Eleman he's doing absolute wonders on the Victor Roque deal and hopefully does more wonders for Barcelona in the future but yes this is one step for him being confirmed as a new sporting director of Barcelona he couldn't have the agency if he wanted to be the sporting director of Barcelona he has now closed it you should go and read Rafinha's matches, matches by the way on Instagram it's very heartfelt for you know a player who was, who was his agent for a few years and he really poured his heart on that message. But nonetheless, Deco will be said to be the new sporting director of Barcelona probably in the next month. Official announcement alongside the announcement of Mateo Aleman staying as well. And he will be given a lot of power at Barcelona. So that was my reaction to the Barcelona news over the past 48 hours. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you leave a like. And of course, leave me your thoughts down below in the comments on everything we discussed. The main thing I want to first see, of course, is your thoughts on Barcelona putting the pivot position signing on hold. Second, your thoughts on other midfielders being signed, like, you know, Brozovic, uh, Danny Parejo, Guler, Lo Celso. Would you sign them or not? Throw your thoughts on Neymar, would you go for him or not, and your thoughts on the advancements of the Victor Roque deal, and find your thoughts on the sales of those players, such as, you know, the lone ones, of course, Collado, Abdi, Longlet, Samuel Otetis, Serginho Tess. Do you believe the club will get sales done before the end of this month? 
and how many. And of course, make sure you guys subscribe down below if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys next time on the channel. Take care and force the Barca. Let's go, let's go.